emailed the uh, email that single stump from a uh, General Motors. She just received a very important award recogni recognition her leadership and her skills at uh, what she do uh, for General Motors. How are you, Melda? I'm doing fine, Javier. How are you? Great, great, and congratulations for that award. So, can you tell us what what is it? What it was about? Absolutely. I'm very honored to say that I was I was one of the class of 2015 recipients of the. ACER, which is the Hispanic Association on Corporate Responsibility. I was recognized as a young Hispanic corporate achiever. Wow. So uh, what do you do for General Motors? I'm a, currently an industrial engineer in the stamping department. Okay. And I'm based out of um, the facility that we have here in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Okay. And can you tell us, like, what's, what's your, what involves your, your, your work? What, what exactly does that mean? with an extremely diverse workforce and have had great opportunities to work in di different areas of manufacturing. Um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the Spring Hill facility, but it used to be the old Saturn facility. And okay. we are able to build a vehicle, if we wanted to, from start to finish. So it's a very unique automotive facility to work at. Yeah, I always say that uh, cars are almost like a miracle because if you think about, and maybe you can explain us this process in, in a little bit, when you think about how many parts and pieces go into a car and how many providers, uh, I mean, how many different parts uh, that every single element of the car comes from, I mean, uh, there's thousands of people and thousands of little pieces come together and then like you guys at these plants just put them together. I mean, not just, but like it's 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 a very complicated job that a lot of people don't really uh, realize how, how complicated it can be and how much skill it's needed, right? Absolutely. I think it's amazing to see our vehicles come together from metal, just blanks of steel that come in. We're able to press them here at our stamping facility and then to see them roll off the end of the line on final line, ready to go, get loaded on rail trucks to wherever they're going across the nation is unbelievable. And that we have such a great workforce that is proud to build these vehicles, um, quality vehicles for our customers is just amazing. So what uh, what what kind of uh, vehicles are you producing that in that plant in particular? Or are you producing parts for other plants? We do a little bit of both. That's why I said it's the Spring Hill facility is a very unique facility. So we do injection molded parts for. Um, so we're an internal GM supplier. We also mold fascias that go to Bowling Green for the Corvette. We are an engine plant, so we do engines for vehicles such as the GM. Um, the Chevy Malibu. Um, I'm currently working on in stamping where we're stamping exterior and interior metal for the um, 2015 Motor Trend Truck of the Year, the Chevrolet Colorado. Yeah, that's um, it. And we, yeah, go ahead, go ahead. And we also uh, produce a, a vehicle, uh, the Chevrolet Equinox. Okay, so a little bit of everything, you were right. Mm -hmm. So uh, Imelda, tell us uh, where are you from and uh, how did you get into automotive? Sure, no problem. I was born and raised in El Paso, Texas. Um, I was, I'm a graduate of the University of Texas at El Paso. I um, graduated there in 99 with a Bachelor's of Science in Industrial Engineering. Um, I started to work for General Motors in September of 99 um, in a facility that we had in Shreveport, Louisiana. And I took advantage of my employee benefits and utilized the tuition reimbursement program um, while I was working um, to complete my graduate studies at Centenary College of Louisiana in Shreveport, Louisiana. Okay. That's actually where I met my husband. Oh, that's great. Congratulations on that, too. Uh, I actually went to the Shell Echo Marathon a few weeks ago in Detroit, and I met the team from the University of Texas at El Paso. And they had a pretty amazing team. Uh, most of them Hispanics, actually, obviously. I mean, from El Paso, I don't know what's the percentage, but uh, I believe it's pretty high. And uh, they were, like, an incredible team. I mean, like, they were uh, about 15, 20 students, and um, including some girls. Uh, I remember the name of one, Vivian Vasquez. She actually was the pilot of the car that they uh, they participated with at the Shell Echo Marathon. And uh, it seems like they were, like, really advanced. It surprised me because, I mean, at their age, I mean, they're doing such... Uh, um, advanced uh, things. <laughs> I felt ashamed a little bit almost because, I mean, they were really amazing. So the, the University of Texas in, in El Paso, it's a very good uh, school for engineering, huh? Absolutely. We are nationally 
recognized as an institution to support engineering, um, and as well, um, the number of Hispanic engineers that graduate from the university is also um, high. So when you were studying there, did you already had like uh, some leads to get a job at GM, or how did you get into GM then? No, uh, unfortunately, I didn't have any leads. I did have friends um, while I was going to the university who had previously worked for GM, and they always told me it was such a great company to work for. Um, so after graduation, I presented a research paper at a, an Institute of Industrial Engineering conference in Phoenix. And they had a career fair, GM had a booth, and I knew if I had went there with my resume in hand, I had a good shot at getting an, an um, employment opportunity from General Motors. Yeah, like you, you mentioned that you had some friends at, uh, at some that have worked at GM, but like, I guess the best friend is your, your grace, I mean your notes, I mean what you do, your work, right? Correct. So, um, when, um, when you started at GM, what was your first job there? I was hired for an industrial engineering position in um, at a manufacturing facility we had in Shreveport, Louisiana. So I supported the production floor um, in the trim department. So basically, the department that we're all once you get the vehicle, so you get the body and it's painted, all the stuff that goes in the vehicle, um, I, I supported that department. Yeah. So uh, as I mentioned, I met uh, some of the students from the University of Texas in, in El Paso, and uh, a lot of uh, girls were there. Uh, I mean, that idea that uh, automotive, the automotive industry is only for for uh, males, I mean, that's that's a thing of the past, right? I mean, like, you are a, an example of what can, can be achieved if you ha work hard and, like, put your efforts into it. Yes, absolutely. Um, GM, actually, the largest amount of women that we have working for GM is in the field of engineering. Yeah. And I've got great role models to look forward to as I progress in my career. We have a female CEO, Mary Barra, and the highest ranking Latina in the automotive industry works for GM. Yeah. So what would be your advice to, to people, who girls who are listening to the show and like hearing your story of, uh, that might get discouraged with something that goes bad one day here at, at school or something? I mean, what, what's your advice to, to advance in this kind of uh, work? Obviously, hard work, perseverance, and uh, uh, making an impact to the bottom line will help you shine in the auto, in the auto industry. So you were recognized by this ACER uh, organization because of your leadership. Can you give us an example of what, how you apply leadership in your daily work? Sure. I can tell you one of my past assignments was as a core team group leader. So I led a group of 10 hourly employees to do continuous improvement activities in the plant. So if somebody needed help, they called the core team. I, I got, I was able to select the best of the best on site to be a part of this team. I led that team to go um, tackle uh, projects across the site. So any little thing somebody needed help with, we were there and we were able to um, resolve their problems. Yeah, I have had uh, the opportunity to visit some plants, uh, including some GM plants, uh, and uh, it's pretty amazing to see. I mean, obviously there's a lot of robots now. I mean, uh, there are a lot of automated processes that go there. But uh, the human touch is always there at every point to make sure that every car is uh, perfect. As I said before, like parts come from everywhere in the world, or many countries at least. And then, like, you put it together, and then, like, we as a customer, we press a button, and we turn on the radio, and it turns on, like, <laughs> perfect. So there's a lot of human touch still in this industry, yeah? Absolutely. It's not just all robots. There is there is a huge human component that goes into getting these um, quality vehicles that people drive every day. Yeah. Okay, well, Imelda, thank you very much for your time. And uh, it's, um, we're going to post uh, uh, some of the information about the award you receive. And obviously, you're an inspiration for a, a new generation of uh, Lat uh, ingenieras latinas. <laughs> okay? Sí, gracias, Javier. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Bye.